Every hour of every day, millions of containers are being shipped around the world. It is difficult to imagine how modern transport of cargo would operate if the container had not been invented. The container was designed to standardize the transport difficulties of getting any type of product between the buyer and the seller, even if the buyer and the seller lived in different countries. The buyer is the person who purchases a bulk consignment of goods from a manufacturer to sell to his customers. The seller is the manufacturer or distributor who wishes to sell his goods to any potential buyer. Many decades ago, the container was not in existence and the transport of goods was handled under the term break bulk. Break bulk is a term used for loose cargo and would be transported in hessian bags, boxes and any other type of non-standardized container unit. The disadvantage of break bulk is that it is generally difficult to manage for a variety of reasons. Handling of cargo, the lack of standardized packing to secure the cargo from damage and the influences of changing weather all contributed to damage and loss of cargo. This has the potential to incur severe financial expense and drives up the cost of shipping cargo between the buyer and the seller, making shipping unaffordable and laden with risk. The container was designed to be an intermodal transportation device, allowing the unit to be transported on a variety of vehicles and seagoing vessels. Two of the vessels you have seen are trucks and container ships. There are other types of specialized vehicles which were specially developed for handling the container. And two of these are spreaders and cranes, which you will usually see operating in a harbor or shipping port. It is useful to remember that the container carries the consignment of goods to be transported. The goods or cargo can be anything from a container load of televisions from Japan, a shipment of Levi jeans from the United States, a consignment of coffee beans from Jamaica, and that includes every other product you have come to know that is sold on the supermarket shelf. There is specific documentation that is intricately linked to the tracking and clearance of containers. A container will have to pass through customs and excise as it enters or leaves a country and the customs department expects certain documents for the proper clearance of the goods to be shipped. Wherever a container moves, the documentation must flow. Documentation is a key part of the success of shipping since it specifies the conditions of how the cargo is to be shipped. Documentation is also used to track and monitor the progress of the container so that the cargo packed inside the container gets to its final destination successfully with the least damage and in the appropriate amount of time. The entry clerk, import clerk and export clerk are three career paths that focus specifically on the documentation generated to track containers and their roles are demanding yet rewarding as they handle the various documents that make shipping a success. These clerks will generally never see the actual container and work from an office communicating and monitoring the important information needed to know where the specific containers are and if they are still in good shape. The clerks will take this information and notify the buyer and the seller at various intervals to keep them up to date that everything is going smoothly. The role of the clerk is your entry point into the world of shipping and your growth prospects are varied depending on your desire and drive to get to the top. Clerks can progress through to various roles in a company such as freight representative, channel controller and line manager where the pay package is comparable to a modern executive.